Hello, everybody. Oh, you're going to have to do better than that. Okay, a little bit of a Q&A for you. It's going to be interesting because we have some translations going on because obviously this is being streamed around the world. So uh, we'll see how we go with that. Bear with me. It might be a bit confusing at times. So two people for the, for the Q&A today. Don't really need any kind of introduction from me, but give them a round of applause anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, Forrest Griffin and your own champion, Joanna Jandracek. Welcome, guys. Thank you. So we have two microphones set up. We have one there and one over there. Please, if you've got a question, go and stand behind the microphone. If you want to speak in Polish, that's perfectly fine. We have a translator. Darius, there he is. He's going to translate questions from Polish into English for us. And then Joanna's going to do the rest of the work for us because she's multi-talented, as you can see, with the shiny belt over her shoulder. Okay. Any questions to start with? No? Really? Okay, then. Forrest, well, my first question. Yeah. Ten years ago, yesterday, was your pivotal fight with Stefan Bonner. You, you mean that one time when I saved the sport from That one Libya? time when you saved the sport. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah, you that for one, that. that one time. Yeah, it's ten years. Do you realize, how old were you when you saw that fight? Oh, like four, five? Okay, all yeah. right. So I was trying to make it up really you're young. old. Yeah. <laughs> but I realize I'm very old, so it's ten years, so yeah. So, so what are your thoughts? Obviously, ten years has passed since that happened, and the sport's changed so much. What, I mean, you, you're here now in Krakow, the, the first UFC event in Poland, first European champion on the stage with us. What are your thoughts? J just how much the sport has evolved and how the level of athlete has improved so much. You know, we get so many more... You know, talent goes where the money is. There's money, there's notoriety. People see the sport, and there's the whole new generation of athlete that's come into it and kicked the old people like me out. So, thank you, Forrest. <laughs> Next generation, right? Uh, and, and what about you? Do you, you, you want to get back in there? Do you ever feel like there's oh, a drive no, no. for it? God, no. You God, done? No. Officially no. done? Over? So, what do you do with your time now? Obviously, you're an ambassador for the sport. You, you work a lot with the UFC. Well, I have a kid. That takes a lot of time. Really? You ever, yeah, it really does. Can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, uh, be careful. Be careful. It's very top Kitsubi. <laughs> Excellent. And, okay, I've got to ask. We, we were hanging out here, what, two weeks ago? And there were motorbikes in here and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And you literally just won the belt then. Has it sunk in now? Have you had time to, like, relax? And you've you furnished your apartment, I saw, on Instagram. And you've been doing all the kind of homely things. What's it like to now be the champion and be settled? Yeah, I was busy for two weeks after the fight. Very busy. I'm still busy. I was a busy person before. Uh, I've got the title, so now I'm more busy lady. Uh, but, uh, of course, I have uh, uh, some, I had some vacation at my home. I could cook and just relax, you know. But I'm happy to be part of it. Uh, and are you back training? Uh, yes, I did some cardio, but uh, when I will get home on Sunday, I will start my trainings uh, from Monday. So, yeah. Uh, and Forrest, obviously, the, the introduction of the women's weight classes, what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's still, uh, there's a lot of talent at the top. There's three or four women in each weight class that are pretty good, but then it kind of thins out after that. And I think that's just, it's like where men's fighting was 10, 15 years ago. It's just a product of, you know, as the sport grows, like, I know a lot of 12 and 14-year-old girls that, are really going to be like good someday, you know? So, you know, the, the more time passes, the more competitive those divisions will be and the more stacked they'll be just like the men's. Yeah, well, we have two big fights on the card tomorrow night in your division. Uh, what were your thoughts on them? Yeah, I'm happy that uh, uh, UFC put some uh, strawweight uh, fights, uh, uh, yeah, on the card. So I'm happy because I can watch my future opponents. Yeah, d does it change things now, obviously? Now you have the belt, and you don't have something to aim for. Yeah, so now I must run away with my belt. <laughs> You're a fast runner. Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> okay, questions. Let's go for that one up there. Yeah, hi. Question for Forrest. Um, Forrest, hi. Uh, in the documentary about you that's on Fight Pass, right, you said that you were offered a rematch after uh, Spider beat you, right? They offered you a rematch right after the fight, and you declined it. You said that you don't want a rematch, you want to unmatch the first match, right? <laughs> that is so, true, yes. Yeah, my question is, 
after that, after that decision, did you ever regret it? That, you know, it's cool enough to fight Silva once, but fight him twice, twice and get well, the chance. It, there wasn't actually ever a real, a real offer. That was, oh. uh, that was like from the media. Hey, would you, would you fight Anderson again? And I was like, no. <laughs> I should have fought him the first time. That's where it all started going wrong. Uh, okay, thanks. I Asha? I don't have a lot of but congratulations. We are really happy. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Kasia. Do you, do you want to translate that for he, us? He, did, he didn't uh, have a question, but he just wanted to say that, that he's happy that I won this title. So. That's very nice. That's very nice. Thank you. Okay. Is that a Scottish flag I see? It is indeed. Good for you, my friend. Oh, so I've got a question for uh, Forrest Griffin here. And you were in arguably the greatest fight of all time against Stefan Bonner. I mean, we don't have to argue about it, it was, but go ahead. Of course, of course. You were also a, a light heavyweight champion, and I just want to ask, which, which means more to you? To say that you were in one of the greatest fights of all time, or to hold that, that UFC belt? Uh, being, being in that fight at the, uh, you know, 10 years ago, that was the biggest moment of my life, because that was the day when I knew that my passion of fighting would be my profession. I knew that my job was not to, you know, bounce and clean up a gym and not to teach kids classes, but I knew that I was going to pay my bills just training and fighting. How long Those, did it take you know, for that to set in? How, like, I'm sure after the fight... Solid, like, uh, well, they hit me to the, the paycheck, like, in the locker room that night, so about an hour, about an hour. That's perfect. Thank like, you so yeah! much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next up. Mr. Forrest Griffin, as a former champion and a legend of the sport, do you have a piece of advice for our new crown champion, Joanna? It's a good question. No, it is a good question. I wish I had a better answer. No, she seems to be doing fine. I, I actually really like the fact that you like to fight. Like, when I see, I, I don't see, like, when I see her in her opponent's face, I know that person, their training's going well. They're doing well in sparring. Like, they feel good. You know, you don't get up in somebody's face unless things are going well for you. So I, you know, I, just watching her and, and uh, you know, I like it. I think it's okay to have swagger. It's okay to be aggressive. It's fighting. So, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much. I mam jeszcze jedno dla Joaśki. Karla Esparza była uważana za dużo lepszą zapaśniczkę niż Klaudia Gadela, a mimo to poradziłaś sobie z nią dużo lepiej. Czy wydaje się, że to dlatego, że Karla była przereklamowana, czy takie duże postępy poczyniłaś między walkami. Karl was seen as a better wrestler than you than Gadelia. So what do you think about Karla in, in her wrestling? E, tak jak powiedziałam, e, Gadela dla mnie była najcięższą przeciwniczką. Oczywiście stawka walki z Karlą Esparzą była największa w mojej dotychczasowej karierze. E, ale nie, śmiało mogę powiedzieć, że to Gadela jest dużo lepszą zawodniczką niż Karla Esparza. E, w Stanach każdy mówił o jej zapasach i ja tak przed walką się zastanawiałam, cholera jasna, czy te zapasy naprawdę są tak mocne, bo, bo wiadomo, zapasy w Stanach e, królują, ale... E, no ale jak sami mogliście zobaczyć, e, nie była tak dobra i jej zapasy nie są tak dobre jak moje. Także to wszystko. Dziękuję bardzo i gratuluję zdobycia pasu. Dziękuję. Shall I get the translator to do that one for us? I said that uh, I think that uh, Claudia, she's a better fighter than Esparza, but uh, when I was in America, everyone was talking about uh, Carla's wrestling, so I had it uh, in my mind. But uh, my wrestling is better than her. You could see it in a fight. That's all. And tell me about the elbows as well, because that was something that we don't see a lot of the time during takedown defense. I mean, every time she shot in for a takedown, you stuffed it and you elbowed her in the face. And I mean, that, that would put me off shooting. I will show ball. you more in my next fight. More okay. elbows, more knees, more kicks. I'm going to start to do it, you know. Nice. Whose idea was that? With the elbows, was that something that you were working on specifically for this fight? Yeah, I did. I did like 80 or almost 100 fights in uh, Muay Thai, so I like elbows. That's why. <laughs> nice. Next question, please. Cześć Aśka, e, hey. mam takie pytanie do ciebie. Jak ci się podoba w ogóle kulanka w kimonach? I czy będziesz to robić cały czas? Bo jak wiadomo, teraz będą ciebie obalać, będą chcieć próbować poddać i tak dalej, nie? How do you like wrestling in kimonos? Are you going to continue doing that? 
Zrobiłam jak na razie dwa treningi, jest to coś nowego, bo nareszcie mam czas, żeby bawić się treningiem i oczywiście będę robiła kimona. Pierwszy trening nie poszedł e, gładko, bo ja lubię jak coś mi wychodzi, tak samo było na początku z moim parterem, gdy e, podjęłam decyzję, że przechodzę do MMA, ale będę, będę robiła kimona, bo wielu zawodników z mojego klubu i oczywiście z innych e, chwalą, e, że to się później dobrze przekłada na walkę w parterze bez kimon, także Będę to robiła, lubię to, ja bardzo lubię parter i lubię się tym bawić i naprawdę się w tym odnajduję i myślę, że moje przyszłe przeciwniczki nie będą miały już pomysłów, aby próbować mnie obalać, a ja będę chciała znowu grać z nimi może w parterze, zobaczymy. Dzięki. So, so I say that uh, I really like uh, jujitsu in kimono, but I did it just for two times, but uh, I like it so much and I will, I will keep on doing this and... Uh, i would like to fight uh, more on the ground in the future. Nice. So my next fight is uh, going to be on the ground. <laughs> Excellent. I've just got the gear out as well. I want to start training again. It feels like, like a, a, an entirely separate thing to mix martial arts for me because, it, because of the gear. Have you ever trained in the gear? You work with Drysdale quite a bit. Yeah, no, I've, I've trained in the gear a bunch. It's good for old people. It slows everything <laughs> down and you can just kind of grab and hold people. So you learn the grips and you're like, oh, yeah. I remember when I was young and, and athletic, people would put me in a gear and like, I'd be like, this sucks. You're just holding me. And it was like, yes. <laughs> That's the, now I get it. Like, yes, you're, you're just holding that person. That's For the benefit of old people. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next question, please. Yeah, hi, I'm Abdul from Egypt, and uh, my question is for Forrest and Joanna. Um, hypothetically speaking, if you had a chance to um, have an MMA uh, tag team fight, who would your partner be and why? That's, that's a great question. No, I'll let you answer first. Does it have to be like somebody in the UFC? Can I pick like a lion or something? Like no, train, you have to pick a fighter. Like a trained guess, yeah. bear? I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Griffin. She, she's just going to handle both on her own, I think. <laughs> she's got it. Is there another fighter out there that you would pick to fight side by side with if you needed a partner to fight with? Yeah, I, don't, I will fight with everyone. Yeah? Like, I don't care. I'm, you know, I'm part of UFC. And uh, if they want me to fight with, I don't know who, X, yeah. then I'm gonna fight with X. I think right now, I mean, I would take her. Uh, also, I'm in Poland, so she could also like translate. So I think definitely her. Yeah. That's a good question. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Uh, how's it going? All good. the way over from uh, Dublin. So inevitably, you're gonna get a question about Conor McGregor. Yeah. <laughs> I got a friend of mine here where two of us are pretty torn over the Aldo fight. I actually think Aldo might win. He's convinced McGregor is going to win. So I want the whole panel to uh, give their opinion on who they think is going to get the basically going to win the fight. Okay. Biggest subject in the sport right now, Aldo or McGregor? So Who's I, first? I, I think it's going to be an interesting fight. Uh, Pressure's on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Better gonna win, of course. Aldo is a champion. Uh, I have b big respect for him. But like I said, me and uh, Dos Anjos, we show uh, that that uh, everyone can win the title. You know, you know what I mean. And so Connor can win this fight, but. You know, I don't know. Better gonna win. It's gonna be an interesting fight, but everything can happen. You know, I, I kind of I've been drinking the green Kool Aid, man. I don't know. I uh, I think uh, Connor's the bigger guy. Uh, Aldo's got more wear and tear on him. Uh, Aldo's bread and butter is a bang bang chop leg kick that doesn't work on a southpaw. Uh, and if he kicks him to the inside, like Connor's like best move, the move they showed on Sports Science is that spinning. Heel kick to the body. I think every any time it goes inside, Connor will just you know swing the heel around on something like that. So I, I you know I, could, I, I like I said the green Kool Aid's delicious. That, that's a good question. Is your belt getting kind of heavy? It looks heavy. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not gonna give it to yeah, no. nobody. You're not gonna get it, Rob. It's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. You can't hold it. She'll come suffer on, for come it. Come on. Uh, are you asking me as well the question, Absolutely. McGregor Aldo? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you do watch ugh. fights professionally, so you should have an yeah, opinion. Yeah, I should, I should have an opinion on this, right? It, it's, it's an interesting one because obviously the, the low kicks is, is the, um, the deciding factor for me. If Aldo can make his low kicks work, I think he can really slow McGregor, McGregor down. 
but McGregor has a height reach advantage. He is very, very quick, very unorthodox. And the one thing behind him right now, which nobody else in, uh, that st stepped in there with Aldo has done, uh, he's got unshakable belief and a nation behind him that believes in him just as much as he does. And really, that, that can be a deciding factor in a fight, just the self-belief alone. Um, I'm a big fan of Conor McGregor. I think sometimes he steps over the line and he's disrespectful, but he's definitely getting a reaction out of Aldo, and I've not seen that before either. So I think one, one punch can change it, and I think Conor can land that punch, but at the same time, no one's managed to do it yet on Aldo. So I'm going to sit firmly on the fence for right now. <laughs> also, one quick question. Uh, Forrest, when's your next book coming out? That's a great question. I'm, I'm about a halfway through of a, 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 like a self-help uh, slash parenting guide. Uh, I'll let you know. Maybe like uh, I'm three years in on the kids, so maybe like 15 more years. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first of all, Forrest, this is the, first, the third time we speak today, so officially I declare myself your best friend in Poland. So okay. congratulations. Okay. All right. You came all the way here to become best friends with a Venezuelan, so there that, you go. That's awesome and yeah. ironic. All no, right, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first, first question, uh, it goes to Forrest. Uh, you are well known for training really hard and sparring like a madman. And mad really, man. really stupid, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say, you said it yourself, okay. Uh, and I heard, for example, Joe Rogan saying that you actually, you got knocked out in the, in the gym before you Anderson Silva fight. I did. Thanks for bringing that up. I was hoping you were going to ask I'm your like, best oh, friend, man. bro. I told you, man. So um, what do you think uh, about the new trends of guys slowing down in the sparring sessions and focusing more on technique? And what advice well, do you have I for young that, fighters I, here I, today? Yeah, well, I would simply say that, uh, you know, a lot of my best fights were in the gym. And you know what? You don't get paid for them, and exactly. nobody sees them. So there's really no point in having great fights in the gym. You know, you train for a fight, and you have to get, you know, a couple times a week, you have to get close to that aliveness, that actual, you know, speed of, of combat that, you know, that makes you uh, flinch. You know, you don't flinch in practice, because you know that guy's not trying to take your head off. But, uh, you know, people are slowing it down. And the other thing people are doing... Uh, think about a pro boxer. A pro boxer never works with people that are the equal. He always works with people a little less than, you know, and that's a trend too. Perfect. And my second part, it goes to Dan and to Joanna as well. Um, do you think the UFC is doing enough to develop talent, especially, especially when it comes to niche markets such as the Eastern Europe or Brazil? Because, for example, uh, in European football clubs, uh, forest by football, uh, I mean soccer, sorry. Um, football proper, I'm clear. Okay, okay. So, uh, for example, Barcelona or Manchester United, they have, like, talent development programs in these, uh, like, for example, in Poland, in Argentina, and so on. Do you think the UFC uh, is doing enough to develop talent? Do you think they could actually go into these markets and develop institutions that will teach mixed martial arts within the young, younger generations? And Joanna, once you are done defending your title 20 times and you move up to 145 pounds and you kick <laughs> Cyborg's ass, um, do you think you can retire and become like the face of this institution in Europe and help developing MMA in Europe? Yes, I think I already did. Like I said, UFC is going to bring uh, MMA in Poland on different level, and I'm going to stay in 115. <laughs> and in the future, if they if they gonna make new division 125, then I gonna move and I gonna be champion again. Hell yeah. And then I will think about 135. But we will see. <laughs> and then, what do you think? Do you think the UFC is doing enough to develop young talent? Well, <laughs> obviously, there's, there's there's more that we can be doing. Um, but from my experience, particularly uh, uh, with the Stockholm show that we did, um, the UFC did a lot um, for the gyms, the local gyms in the area. They donated money. Um, we taught seminars, uh, Forrest and I uh, taught a seminar for the police force as well there. The, the most important thing right now is just spreading awareness of the sport. Uh, we still have resistance in different countries, obviously France, there's still resistance in, 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 there in New York as well. So really at the moment we're still trying to educate people about the sport. Um, I think kids are going to gravitate to the sport anyway. I mean I started martial arts when I was six and I think that people will find their way into martial arts if they're supposed to. And obviously with The Ultimate Fighter and with a lot of the, the shows around Europe, we have great shows. You have great shows here in Poland. I've seen a few of them myself. Same in the UK. 
it, it's the smaller shows that are going to nurture the, the lower level fighters. And exactly. I think the UFC needs to do more to work with the lower level shows and, and treat them more as feeder shows so people feel like there's a natural path to get to the UFC. Like for me, when I was Cage Warriors champion, but that didn't mean that I was going to get to the UFC. Whereas now, you know, if you're a champion of a big organization, you can guarantee the UFC are going to be interested yeah. in you. And that's, that's important, working with other events and, and instead of seeing them like competition. I think that's it. Because a lot of people feel very threatened when the UFC come to town. I've like, got oh, a no. better answer. Oh, okay. Of course, Forrest has got, got a better wanted, answer. If, if you, I know you already asked me, but so uh, there, there's no problem finding the fighters that are out there. That's, that's, that's going to happen naturally. If you're a good fighter, you want to fight in the UFC. End of story. Uh, what we need to do and what we're doing really successfully is we have like a Polish champion now. So the awareness, young people will start. And then the next generation of Polish fighters will be born because they see her with the belt, you know? And, then, and that's how you, you know, spread it yeah. over the long term. The thing is that in Europe, for example, in Europe, we lack the infrastructure and all the system that you already have hey, in place dude, in America. Hey, dude, I just fixed Poland. I can't be <laughs> responsible for all of Europe. Come what on. What I'm saying is Poland is open, so bring the money to us. We'll make it up for you. Okay? You, know, you know what helps uh, to have a, like, you know, Conor McGregor, uh, you know, a big, strong name that you can be like, oh my gosh, you know, he's from my country, he's really good in the UFC, and, th and that's when the kids will start, oh, that's something I want to do. Yeah, okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Next question. A uh, question to Forrest. Uh, who was the toughest guy that you have to fight with? And another question I say, uh, what's your dream match that you like to take part in? Uh, the toughest guy I ever worked with was Vanderlei Silva, um, I think. And, and Diego Sanchez is actually one of the toughest human beings I ever met, too. Um, I think he might just not get it sometimes. <laughs> so, like, I think that's, he's like, something doesn't connect, and that's why he's so unbelievably tough. Uh, as far as a dream match, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, are you in good shape? I'd fight you, I think. <laughs> Maybe. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, kidding. If, if you're in shape, it's off. You got to be out of shape. I think I'm in shape. <laughs> but I'm after injury, so I wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. What? <laughs> okay, thank you. Asia, gratulacje. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next question. We've got a huge line over here. You know, if a couple of you guys go onto that side, you won't have to wait 45 minutes to ask a question. You can use both mics. Honestly, go for it. Uh, thanks, my, my name is Łukasz, I'm, I'm from po, uh, Poznan. I have a question for all three of you. Uh, you all, all of you seem uh, like uh, happy, po, po positive, fun, uh, funny people, and how, how important it is for, for uh, m martial arts, you, you know, be, being happy, positive, and not tr uh, tr treating it uh, so serious all the time. Because we are part of UFC, so you cannot feel it, man, but we can, so. I'm happy. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah. Martial Forest. arts is hard. You know, people try and hit you in the face and stuff. You have to find ways to be positive. Otherwise, you'll just be depressed all the time. Well, as, as this is all an act. I'm an angry, <laughs> bitter, small person. I, I'm never happy. This is, I'm just faking this for your benefit. And you're welcome. No, uh, he's not. <laughs> Oh, and by, uh, by, uh, by the way, I also speak, uh, speak to, to you for the uh, third time today, and, uh, and I have a balloon t-shirt, yeah, so I, I am know, your better I, friend. I know I picked you out as the guy with the awesome <laughs> t-shirt, but the other guy's my best friend already, sorry. Uh, oh, 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 well, I, I can always be n number two. Uh, and uh, fan page UFC Polska na, na Facebooku. Wszystkich zapraszam do lajkowania. I gave himself a shout out, I think. Whatever that guy said. He said that... No, I'm not going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Just check your UFC fan page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question, please. Question to Dan. Okay. Um, are you clear for fighting? And is there anyone on your mind that would you like to face next? Maybe Carlos Condit again? I'm really excited about Condit's matchup against Alves. I think that's going to be one of the best fights that we're going to see in the welterweight division. I, unfortunately, am not cleared to fight yet. I still need to go and see some cardiologists and do some treadmill tests and that kind of thing. Um, I still very much have a drive to fight. I would like to fight again. Um, I have no interest in belts or titles or rankings or anything. I just want to, you know, compete again. I just want to fight with somebody. So I'm looking forward to fighting at some point in the future, but as of right now, I'm not sure when that's going to be. 
When you look at this encyclopedia of UFC, which is released back in 2012, your name is like a one column only, and Pearson takes half of the page. So, I've got more work forward. to do, right? <laughs> looking forward. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Next question, please. Pytanie do Asi, czy uważasz, że twój sukces został w Polsce odpowiednio doceniony, czy poza granicami naszego kraju nie stałaś się większą gwiazdą niż tutaj? Do you think your success in Poland have been appreciated well in here, or people outside Poland are judging you better? Grunt, że docenili, docenili to ci, którzy powinni i grunt, że ja czuję się z tym dobrze. Ale oczywiście już nieraz to powtarzałam, że my byśmy bez fanów nie żyli i fani bez nas by nie mieli rozrywki. Także no, nie chcę tu się rozbijać, ale w Stanach jest trochę inny pogląd na, na MMA, na UFC już w ogóle, na to jeżeli ktoś jest mistrzem. Oczywiście dużo uwagi jest skierowane na mój sukces, skierowanej na mój sukces, na moją osobę i bardzo mnie to cieszy, bo są szczere osoby, które mnie wspierają. Mam dużo szczerych fanów, dużo uwagi ze strony mediów, ale jednak do końca ta świadomość nie jest jeszcze na, na tak wysokim poziomie, jak powinna być. Także w Stanach na pewno dostałam więcej uwagi, ale jak mówię, w Polsce również. Ale za granicą wygląda to zupełnie inaczej. Okay. So I, I say that I've got more attention in America, but of course I've got some honest fans in Poland and I'm happy. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next question. Ja mam pytanie do Asi. E, zakładając, że dzisiaj Jojo Calderwood e, wygra na gali, znaczy jutro, co ja mówię, e, czy byłabyś w stanie bronić tytułu w Szkocji, czy wolałabyś w USA albo w Polsce? If Jojo wins tonight, uh, tomorrow, uh, would, you, <laughs> would you like to defend your title here in Poland or there in Scotland? Hmm. I've got my boss in UFC, so. If, if UFC want me to fight in Glasgow, I will do this in Glasgow. If they want me to fight in Africa, I will fight in Africa. You know what I mean? So I don't care. I, I like to fight in America. Of course, in the future, I would like to fight here in Poland, in my country, for you guys. But uh, I like US a lot. And uh, like I said, I, I, I gonna do everything what UFC wants. That's all. Jeszcze jedno pytanie, jak mogę? E, jak e, według ciebie Mamed Khalidov pasowałby się w e, wagę średnią w UFC? How do you think Mamed Khalidov would fit in the UFC? Mamed jest moim klubowym kolegą. E, dla mnie e, takim no, idealem mogę powiedzieć, bo wzoruje się na nim. E, co by ludzie nie mówili. Ja myślę, że gdyby poszedł do UFC, byłby mistrzem i, i na długo by zawitał w UFC. A dwa, szanuję i rozumiem jego decyzję. Miał swoje lata, ma rodzinę i słusznie wybrał. Wybrał to, co podpowiadało mu serce i głowa. Dla mnie jest mistrzem i pozostanie do końca swoich dni. So, Mamed Khalidov is like, he's the biggest Polish MMA star also in Europe. Uh, and I think that uh, that he could be a UFC champion because uh, I like him so much and he's one of the greatest for me. Very good, thank you. Which side are we? This side? Yeah. Go for it. Okay, so I have uh, two questions. One is for Dan and one is for Joanna. So ladies first. Aśka, uh, pierwsza i najważniejsze. Wielkie gratulacje. Jesteś niesamowita. Uh, Congratulations, you're the best. Chciałbym się zapytać, jaka była największa zmiana, której się nie spodziewałaś po tym, jak wygrałaś pas? What was the most surprising change after you won the belt? Chyba nie było takiej zmiany. Nadal mogę spokojnie żyć i jestem z tego szczęśliwa. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have like a big change, and I can, I, I can have my easy life. And I'm happy. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Uh, then uh, I just wanted to say that your fight against GSP was actually my first full event that I watched 
and I was so, so impressed with your resilience in this fight that actually it got me into this sport. So thank you very much for that. And I want to ask, why do you want to fight Kaszczak so bad? I mean, I know the guy is a dick, but <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't why, mind, I don't why mind Kostyuk. I don't mind Kostyuk. We, we had a we had a few words back and forth a few years ago, and you know, a lot's happened since then. I, I don't think about Kostyuk at all. Uh, the other week, somebody mentioned him to me in Dublin and asked me if I'd like to fight him. And yeah, why not? I'd like to fight Kostyuk because he's one of those people that's fun to punch. You know, it, I don't have anything against him. I don't really have anything against anybody in the UFC anymore. I'm kind of I've kind of grown past that now. I just like sport. I like competition. And I love martial arts. And Koscheck's a great wrestler. He's a great fighter. He's having a bit of a rough skid at the moment, but I still respect him as an athlete. And I think he would test me. So, uh, you know, if, if that was an option, then I would accept. Okay, I can understand that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Yeah, hey, uh, firstly, I just want to say uh, congratulations to Joanna for winning the championship. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a good fight. You won me a lot of money that night, so uh, well done. Uh, this is a question just to all three. Is, um, seeing as the UFC has branched out um, to many parts of the world over the last couple of years, uh, Dan, you were in Dublin only recently, and Forrest, now you're in Poland. Is there anywhere in the world that all three is looking back now, or Joanna in the future, that you would like to fight? Anywhere in the world you'd like to fight? Poland, maybe? <laughs> maybe yes. <laughs> what about you, Forrest? Anywhere that you haven't fought that you'd like to? Man, you know me. I, I like to fight this place. Uh, God, what, Las Vegas, Nevada. Like, That's because you can drive from I, home I to get Yeah, the I would literally, like most of my fights I drove. It's like 10 miles to the arena. I would sleep in my own bed, change nothing and drive and go fight somebody and then just drive home and go to bed. So, uh, you know, that, that was always my favorite place to fight. Uh, I would love to see the UFC in France or Italy, or basically just cool places that I haven't gotten to go yet. <laughs> I'm very, I'm actually really just happy to be in Poland right now, so. I, I don't know, there's a few places. I mean, I enjoyed fighting in Japan, that was very unusual. I've never fought in Australia, I'd love to fight there. Um, and New York, we've got to get to New York soon and we've got to do a big show. I want to see Matt Serra fight Matt Hughes again. It'll be a great fight. <laughs> Uh, I think New York, I think that's the top of my list. I just think it would be a landmark event and it would be an amazing card and I'd love to be a part of it. Yeah, I'd love to see that happen. Cheers. Thank Thanks. you. Next up. All right. First question Forrest. goes to Forrest. Forrest, how did you feel when you beat the Rampage Jackson for the UFC title? I mean, this guy's machine. You know, he slams, punches, wrestling. How did you feel about it? I felt good. <laughs> Damn good, yeah. All right. Great. The, the next question goes to Joanna. You know, you're the UFC champion right now. You're the, in all of the rankings all over the, over the world. You're the number one in your weight division. How did you deal with that pressure? I don't have any. No? no? Nothing at all? No. Even a little bit. Fair enough. <laughs> That's a real champion right there. No pressure at all. No pressure. So confident, I love it. <laughs> Next question, please. Hello. Hello, very nice to see you there. And first question is for Dan Hardy. Uh, is it possible to have a picture with you? <laughs> of course, Somehow. of course. When? Uh, we're going to get the weigh-ins done and then yeah. I'll be around afterwards and I'll do okay. as many as I need to. Pytanie do... Okay. Pytanie do Joanny. Jeśli kiedykolwiek dojdzie do walki cyborgowej z Rondą Rousey, to kto by według ciebie wygrał? Who do you think is going to win the fight bef uh, between Ronda Rousey and Cyborg? It's, it's going to be an interesting fight. Uh, Cyborg just signed a contract with UFC, but uh, there, is, there is some problem that she must make a weight. And Ronda, she's simply the best. And for me, she's simply the best. And she's going to win this fight. And last question for Forrest Griffin. Anderson Silva is my favorite fighter of all time. Thanks. So <laughs> I, was, I was hoping he would come up again. I was hoping, like, ah, please, one more minute. Yeah. What was going through your mind while fighting uh, him? Yeah, I just kind of remember being like literally confused. Like uh, I got hit and I was like, wait, wait, where was he at? He's not where I thought he was. Uh, you know, I just didn't see it coming. I don't know. Just how amazingly slow I am. Coming back. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm glad you brought it up, though. That's great. We got like some therapy here. I can kind of workshop it, get it out. I appreciate that. Can we get All a right. couch up on the stage? You can lay down. We'll ask you some questions about it. <laughs> okay, thank you guys very much. Thank you, thank you. Next question, orange pants. Yeah, I got a, one, <laughs> one question for Forrest. Uh, how was your last night? Uh, what were you doing? Did you like the city? Or <laughs> because you look like a little tired. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, I thought I was making it pretty good, but yeah, I had some fun. I mean, it turns out there was really good vodka here. Was, <laughs> I, I didn't know, I mean, I did not know that I looked hungover, but uh, it's already like three o'clock. I thought it was, oh well. Yeah, it's, it's normal here. I'm, I'm happy for you. So, okay. Cheers. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it again tonight, so. <laughs> okay, I will be there. Watch out. It's going to be a strange night. <laughs> <laughs> With those pants, anything can happen. <laughs> Next question, please. Yes, I got a question for Dan. Yes. And on the last Q&A, you said that you would like to uh, do like two more fights, uh, right? Yeah. And do you see yourself that you could be uh, so dominant in these two fights that you will take a, a title shot? Um, who knows? Who knows? I kind of like to come in and just kick ass three times and just drop the mic and walk out and just be done with it. But I don't know. The, the problem is that if I got cleared to fight again, I don't think I'd ever want to stop fighting. And that's kind of part of my problem. So as much as I would like to fight, uh, I, I don't think I would be able to stop after two or three fights. So I have to, I have to be, be sure about the fact that I don't want to fight for a title and I'm not interested in rankings. So I don't know. It really depends on what weight class I come back in as well. Because if I came back at lightweight, that this, it's such a busier weight class. There's like 300 fighters in there. So... I'd have to have a whole bunch of fights before I got even near a title. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question. Don't grow up, it's a trap. Don't grow up, it's a trap, according to that guy. I believe you. What's your question? Ja mam pytanie do naszej mistrzyni. Troszeczkę moi poprzednicy podkradli mi pytanie, ale je trochę zmodyfikuję. E, jak bardzo zmieniła się twoja popularność? Czy chociażby patrząc na liczbę polubień na Facebooku, znacząco wzrosła przed walką, a z tym, co jest teraz? Czy ludzie dużo bardziej rozpoznają Cię na ulicy? I jak na przykład wygląda zainteresowanie sponsorów? Lub oh. osób, które w jakiś sposób chcą Ci pomóc? How much your popularity here in Poland has changed after you won the belt? So many sponsors are coming here now for you. Teraz każdy chce mi pomóc i stać koło mnie i klepać po ramieniu, ale e, szczerze, szczerze, szczerze ludzie, którzy mi pomogli, e, oni wiedzą, kto to jest. E, moi bliscy, trenerzy, sponsorzy, klubowi, koledzy, e, to jest ta grupa właśnie. Ale no, zainteresowanie jest większe e, z, całego świata, z całego świata. E, póki co nie podpisałam za, żadnego kontraktu sponsorskiego, żadnego nowego, prowadzę parę rozmów, ale szczerze nie jest to jakieś zaskakujące i, i, i mocno wielkie. Tutaj bardziej chodzi o ten aspekt sportowy, chociaż no nie ukrywam, że, że bardzo to by ułatwiło życie, ale oczywiście jestem szczęśliwa z tego, z tego co posiadam, co mam. Ok, dzięki. And question to Forrest Griffin. Uh... Can you compare the level of light heavyweight division right now and when you fought during your career? Generally, what has changed? Uh, how do you see your position right now between all of these guys? Yeah, well, guys are getting a little better and a little better. Uh, you don't realize it because everybody's gotten a little better. You know, it's, it's like if everybody grows, then you don't realize that one person's gotten taller than the other. Uh, the light heavyweight division is in a bit of a rut because John Jones keeps beating everyone up and people have forgotten about how many good uh, light heavyweights there are. But I, I, I pose it this way. Two years ago, uh, Gustafsson wasn't on anybody's radar at light heavyweight. Uh, a year ago, Anthony Johnson was a forgotten guy at light heavyweight. Now, uh, you know, th those guys obviously potential threats. And, and you know, maybe Blakovich is the next guy. I think this is a real good opportunity for him at home to show really what he's about against another guy that wants to stand up with him. So we'll see. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. 
Hi guys, uh, question to Joanna. But uh, first of all, one more congratulations for your last fight because so we all know that the, the way how you won that fight was just incredible and I think we all Polish supporters was pride. So one more time, thank you so much from all of us and from all Polish uh, crazy guys yeah, who loves you, I think, since that. And, uh, you are welcome and I should say yeah. thank you guys. And the question is, uh, of course, since you in the United States, you know a little bit more about UFC than we all. And the question is, uh, you think, because I think we all know that guys like Michał Materla or, I don't know, Boris Mankowski, for us, they're ready for UFC. But I have a question about your opinion. Are you think who else from, from, from other guys could be ready very soon for, for UFC? I like uh, Michał Materla so much. He supports me a lot. Uh, before my fight, uh, I've got some nice messages from him. So he's honest guy, and he gonna come tomorrow, and, uh, mm -hmm. and he gonna be with Daniel Omielanchuk probably. So um, he he chose already the other organization, but uh, like I said, uh, um, Mamet uh, made his choice, uh, Materla did his choice, and. You know, I understand it, and um, I can see Mankowski or Gamrod or Paweł Kiełek from my gym in UFC, and probably Paweł Kiełek gonna be uh, UFC, UFC champion in the future. He's uh, 18, but he gonna be a champion in the future. You're gonna see it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, my question is for all three of you. Uh, what's the most weight you've ever had to cut? And do you think the UFC will implement a maximum weight cut so fighters don't hurt themselves? Most weight you've had to cut, Forrest. Forrest don't cut weight. He just shows up and fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, how much weight do you cut? Like seven, uh, eight kilos. It, it depends, you know. Like I, but I think it's part of our job, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's easy. Uh, so the weight cut, um, you know, your guide is when you can't perform the next day and it's happened to me. You're like, oh, you know what? I'm cutting too much weight because I'm fighting like crap. Uh, so I don't think there's any reason for us to implement anything. Uh, I, don't, I don't like to control fighters' lives. Like, you have a way you like to make weight, do it. If you show up and fight like crap, maybe you need to fix something. If you don't make the weight, maybe you need a different weight class, you know? It, it kind of works itself out, right? 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 Good. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I cut less and less as my career went on. I started out really light, and then I got really heavy, and then I started to bring my weight back down again. The most I did was 14 kilos, and that was way too much. Unfortunately, I stopped the guy in the first round, otherwise I'd have been minced meat, I'd have been beaten up. Yeah, you, th there is a point where you can cut way too much, and we, we see it a lot of the time when people don't perform at their best. So that's, like Forrest, like Forrest said, that's the guide for the fighters. If they're not performing at 100%, they've got to start changing things with their diet. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Next question. Um, hi, I'm Alex from Germany, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> Alex is still here. Thank you, Ian. Um, I've got two, two questions for Forrest. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I always pictured you as a nerd. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd like to... Is there like an IQ level <laughs> that qualifies as nerd? Because I don't know if I'd qualify. Okay, I was kind of always a dumb jock, to be honest. Let's try. I'd like to um, think I'm... Um, I would like to know if there's any movie or um, video game villain that you would like to fight. Oh, that is a great question. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to fight Tyler Durden. He's not a villain. Yeah. He's kind of in just an antagonist. But, you know, from Fight Club. Yeah, of course. I'd like to fight him and then hang out with him and be best friends. And then fight again later. Yeah. And fighting him without knowing that you fought him. Yeah. 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 Just maybe fight myself. Who knows? That's it. Um, and the second question is... Um, Sorry. Um, uh, if I remember maybe, right, maybe it's a question. I don't no, know. No, no. If, if if I remember your first book right, there was a very nice anecdote about um, um, John McCarthy 
climbing out a burning house. All right, so yeah, that wasn't actually John McCarthy. That was my best friend, Big John. Ah, uh, uh, so I John, got it wrong. John McCarthy always is like, hey, yeah, people always say that was crazy what you did, and I have to tell them that wasn't me. So, yeah, there's, there, it turns out there's more Big Johns uh, than just John McCarthy. Okay. But, but see, could you t uh, retell the story because it was No, really nice. he was just, uh, you know, his, uh, his apartment was on fire yeah. and he took what was valuable to him. I, you guys don't have guns here, but he had, so he had like a bunch of guns. So he, you know, gets all his ARs and all, you know, shot. He has like 10 guns. He's like walking down the, uh, the stairs all and the fire guys are running up and they see him and they're like, they immediately think, oh, this guy set the fire and they just start... The fireman basically ran out when they saw the guy with all the guns. He was like, no, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to, the, the sprinklers are, I don't want them to get wet. So that really happened? Yeah, he almost got shot. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Crazy. Thanks a lot, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And don't apologize. It's all right. Uh, let's go. Next person, please. Hello. Yep, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Forrest, big fan. Uh, you are actually a big inspiration, and uh, I remember back in season one of uh, The Ultimate Fighter. One question, how the hell did you survive in that house with the angry motherfucker Diego Sanchez? I, uh, well, I think you can tell. I went a little bit stir-crazy. It was a little bit, uh, you know, like, Never been uh, the same here's since. Johnny. <laughs> it's a little, you know. A little... But when he comes up to the ring, he looks like he's going to explode. Uh, yeah, him you know? and, and the other guy is uh, Clay Guida. It's just yeah. like, but I, I like being around that, though. That's a palpable energy. You know, you feel like, ah, all right, like you, you just had a double espresso just being around the guy. Yeah, but they're not actually that angry in real life, are they? Just when they got ready to fight? Yeah, yeah, they're not, they're not angry. It's hard to be angry all the time. It takes a lot of energy. That's why, like, if you're doing, like, a press tour with the guy that you're going to fight, it's, you know, like, start off easy and then work into the hate. Right. Don't, like, hate the guy right off the bat, because then you've got to keep that level of hate up for, like, another 12 weeks. Excellent. I I've never seen Clay Guida sit down, still. I've never, ever seen him sit down. There was one time he was fighting in Vegas, and it was, like, August or something, and it was the day of the fight, and he was at poolside with his headphones on. It was, like, 100 degrees outside, and he's just doing this. <laughs> Like, hold still, dude. You're fighting in like six hours. Just save some energies. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Excellent. Thank you. You would like to uh, grab a beer later? Do you want to grab a beer later for I, us? Yeah, I'm going to be at that square. You know, the, the, <laughs> like the main square. I'm, just, I'm going to cruise them all. So hopefully <laughs> I'll see you. Good You'll to find see him. Brower. Five. Yeah, I was yeah. there last night. I was there last night. Excellent. <laughs> True Thanks, sure. dude. Yeah. Okay, next person. This guy again. Uh, I've got a question for the full panel, uh, and that is, currently in the state of the mixed martial arts, we have, or yourselves, are the hardest working athletes on the planet. However, there is a problem of performance enhancing drug use. Uh, the great Anderson Silva just got popped for PEDs. And I just, I just want to ask each member personally what you think the penalties should be for, you know, failing a drug test. Uh, well, I mean, I think that, you know, obviously a year suspension, uh, you know, start the, a, a year suspension from when the drug is out of your system. So once you test positive for something, you have to get retested and until it's gone from your system. And, and you know, this is, uh, it's not like, here's the thing, all the guys that do drugs eventually get caught. Like, it doesn't take, like, I don't know, you can't really beat the system now. It's a better system. So I... You know, it's, it's not a huge problem a year, first time, second time, two years, third time, go away. Thank you very much. You want to go? Yeah, I, like, I'm not using these steroids, I want to say, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think everyone should be tested before the fight and like when we are preparation, when we are preparing for the fight, they should test, uh, te test us like I am clean and I want my opponent to be clean as well. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the punishment for me is just people to know that you cheated. 
I think that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. If you, I mean, Anderson Silver, I respect him still as a martial artist. That doesn't change. But I, I was disappointed when I heard that. And I think that that, for me, is more punishment than anything, that the fans will now look at him with a little bit of disappointment. It's just a uh, tarnish, you know? It's, yeah, yeah, It doesn't exactly. have to be. It's like, it's, it's horrible, yeah. Yeah, and, and now you can say, oh, well, that's why he beat me, obviously. It, I mean, it was it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here, man. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Hey there. I've got two questions. Uh, the first goes to the Chan. Uh, Aśka, uh, walka z Gadelią była bardzo bliska. I mam pytanie, czy czujesz taką presję, żeby udowodnić światu? No i przede wszystkim sobie, że jesteś no, mistrzynią. Czy po prostu chcesz ją zmiażdżyć? Your fight against Gadelia was very close. Now, do you feel any pressure to beat her 100%? I want to eat her ear. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, no, uh, uh, a myślisz, że przegram tu walkę? Nie. No to dzięki. <laughs> Bo Osobiście tak nie myślę, ale no. To jest sport i trzeba się liczyć z ryzykiem i trzeba się liczyć z wygraną i przegraną, ale wiadomo, UFC jest na najwyższym poziomie, sędziowie są na najwyższym poziomie i to nie jest już tak, że tylko się obala, się kontroluje i się wygrywa walkę. Tu w grę wchodzi wiele aspektów i ja byłam gotowa na to, że, że mogę tu walkę przegrać, ale później, gdy obejrzałam tu walkę wielokrotnie, wiedziałam, że upewniłam się w tym, że ją słusznie wygrałam. Nie czuję żadnej presji. Ja ostatnio powiedziałam, że ja będę jeszcze większym wariatem w oktagonie niż byłam i po prostu będę trenować jeszcze mocniej i tak to, tak to jest. A jestem, ja czekam na gadele, ale robi parę błędów i się cofa po prostu w drodze, w drodze po ten pas, który ja mam, także musi się ze mną spotkać, ale tu kontuzja, inne problemy, w które nie wnikam, także zobaczymy, co, co się stanie. So, I think I, I watched the fight with Gadela and I think that I uh, that was the right des decision from the judges uh, and I'm happy that I won and I'm ready for Gadela and I don't feel pressure uh, I'm gonna keep this belt like I'm so confident and I gonna train hard and yeah I just gonna keep this belt for a long time that's all My second question goes to Forrest. Uh, we all know you're a funny and positive guy, but I'd like uh, to ask you, when you get drunk, are you even funnier on your like, uh, come at me, when, I'm former When UFC I get champ. drunk, I don't know that I'm any funnier, but boy do I think I am. <laughs> I think I'm hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got five minutes, so we've got three people on the mic. There's one there and two there. At the end of those questions, we're going to have to cut it and get ready for the weigh-ins because we have a, a bunch of thirsty people backstage. So, uh, next question, please. Asia, jeszcze raz gratulacje. Emocje oglądając twoje walki były ogromne, także dziękuję jeszcze raz za to. I mam pytanie do ciebie, jak ciężki jest ten pas? Congratulations for the fight. Emotions were so high. And now, how heavy is the belt? Nie do barku. Nie, no jest, 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 jest ciężki, ale myślę, że tutaj nie chodzi o jego fizyczną wagę, a o tą taką, taką wagę po prostu wkładu pracy, który włożyłam właśnie w przygotowania i w drodze po ten pas. Także, także jest bardzo ciężki i bardzo wartościowy. Uh, and I have a question for Dan. Uh, you are one of my favorite fighters. And I hope you get well and uh, came back to, to some fights. And uh, the question is, uh, what uh, you are weighing right now? Do you want to go back to water weight or go down to lightweight? Uh, I'm about 84 kilos right now, which is, which is quite light for me. When I was fighting at welterweight, I was walking around about 98. So I'm definitely closer to lightweight than I ever have been before. I've not done a cut yet. I've done 160 twice, and that was OK. Um, but, but we'll see. I, I'm going to focus on getting myself physically in, in, in condition to fight first and then see where my weight's at. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Uh, big fan from Norway. Uh, my question is for Dan. Uh, when he was coming up, what was the uh, MMA community like in uh, England? 
And the second question is, uh, how did you get your nickname? <laughs> uh, well, my nickname, uh, The Outlaw, is... Th there's a few reasons behind it. One was because I was outlawed by a, a team that I was training with. They, they were told, I was told I wasn't allowed to train with anybody, so that's why I started it. But the reason it stuck was because of Robin Hood. You know, I, I live in Nottingham, I can see the castle from my house, and people don't believe that Sherwood Forest is a real place, and I get my Christmas tree from there. True story. So, love Robin Hood, and always liked that legend, and always liked, you know, highwaymen and, and uh, cowboys and that kind of thing. So, the outlaw kind of suited me. I always got too much to say for myself. Um, and the MMA community in, in the UK, it was good. It, we had shows very regularly, we had a lot of good fighters, and uh, my goal was, in the first year was to get to the top of the UK, and then as soon as I'd done that, I started to look outside, I started to look towards Europe and then towards America. So I, I, the, the, the community was very, very strong when I first started. Um, and it's a little bit slower at the moment, but we've still got some good fighters coming through. Thank you. Thank you. Last question, please. Question. I got a question for you, Dan. Um, you already had a chance to train with some Polish prospects, right? And do yeah. you think our country... Yeah, do you think yeah, our... Yeah, There you go. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. And do you think our country is ready for an uh, ultimate fighter? M most definitely. Most definitely. I, even if there's not an ultimate fighter for this country, I think a European one would be really good. And I think Poland is going to be a, one of the major players in, in the sport in the next five years. I mean, I spent a week out here touring around. I, I trained with Jan, got my ass kicked, and trained with a bunch, of, a bunch of the fighters on the card, and I was very impressed with every single one of them. And, and not only the guys that are signed to the UFC, but all of the lower-level guys that are helping them train. That Just the level across the whole country is a lot higher than I certainly expected. And if I were to fight again, I, I would like to come back here and help and prepare for it. They okay, just arrived. Mankowski, Gamrod. <laughs> yeah. Blachowicz supporters. So there we welcome, go. guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Excellent. Well, we're going to wrap it up now. We're going to get these guys off stage and get the fighters up here to get weighed in. So please, one more time, give these two guys a round of applause for me. And we have one more thing. We have, we have one more thing. Your champion has a few spare tickets that she'd like to give out. So if you don't have a ticket and you can put your hand up, Joanna's going to pick out four people to bring down to the front and give them some tickets. Tak szczerze, kto nie ma biletu, dajmy szansę po prostu obejrzeć tą historyczną galę tym osobom, które nie mogą. Także kto nie ma tego biletu, ręka w górę. Zakopane, zapraszam. Olsztyn nie ma biletu? Macie. Dawaj. Dawaj gościu. I Asia ja nie mam. Zapraszam małą dziewczynkę. Okay, if she points that you come down to the front, we'll get your tickets. Sit tight, we'll be back in a few minutes with the weigh-ins. Make loads of noise when these guys come out and give them some energy. Thank you guys. Gabriel Gonzaga. Merkel looks tentative, though. Oh, oh my God! Oh, oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Oh, my God.